Now that you have the files and programs in place, we can start the actual install process. This install process is divided into two videos. The first will get everything set up, and the final will do the actual installation. The WordPress program can be installed in different ways depending on your situation. If you have a web hosting account that uses the cPanel, then you likely have a way to automatically install WordPress like Fantastico or Simple Scripts. If you use this method, then you'll need to make sure that the WordPress version is the latest. Some of the automatic installs are not the current version. You can find the current version number at WordPress.org under the Download tab. The install shown in this video will assure that you have the latest stable version of WordPress since we download the latest stable version directly from WordPress.org and you install WordPress where you want it installed. It takes a few steps, but I think it's worth the effort for the control and the security. You will need to have access to a cPanel for this install. In this video, we'll create a database from the cPanel, create a user with a password for that database, and give that user permission to access the database. You can stop this video at any point by clicking the control button and restart it at any time if you need to hear the information again. The first step is to create a database for WordPress to use to store the data. WordPress operates by using a database to store all the information used for the website. Log into the cPanel with the information provided by the web hosting company. Locate the MySQL database on the cPanel. It should be in the database section of the cPanel. Click on this icon. Now enter a name in the New Database field. Enter any name you want that meets the naming protocol of the host server, which is usually letters and numbers, and click the Create Database button. You should get a success screen something like this one. Click the Go Back button. Your new database will show in the current databases table. Next, enter a username in the Username field under Add New Users, and then enter a password in the Password field. You may need to enter the password again to confirm this password. Make sure you use a strong password to help prevent any attempts to hack the database. Click the Create User button and you'll get another success screen. Click the Go Back button again. Now you'll need to add that user to the database to give the user privileges to access the database. Select the database and the user you created from the drop-down menus and click the Add button. This will activate a screen so privileges can be assigned to the user. This user will need all privileges, so select the All Privileges button or select each privilege and click the Make Changes button. This will give you the last success screen in the process. Click the Go Back button to return to the database screen. That completes the creation of the database and adding the user to the database. You now have a database, a username, and a password for this user. Copy this to a text editor like Notepad because we'll need this information later. One final piece of information you'll need is the name of the host for the MySQL database. This is usually localhost, but can be different depending on the web hosting company. Navigate back to the cPanel and locate the PHP MyAdmin icon, usually under Databases. Click on this PHP MyAdmin icon to open it, and at the top of this screen is the host name. If your web hosting does not have this feature, then you need to contact them to get this information. You will need it to complete the install. In the next video, we'll get the WordPress operating files and the web hosting server so they can work with the database and complete the install.